Whew. Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven again. How many of y'all want more? <laughs> yes, it's time. It's time to take the shovel, bury yourself, and throw the shovel away. So that it's no longer the ministry of the flesh, but ministry of the spirit. You know, many people don't even get the ministry of the spirit. It's amazing. Oh, they talk, they want to be filled, they talk this, they talk that. But then they don't live in the spirit or walk in the spirit. Because you can't live in and walk in the spirit. You. Self can't live there. Only the new creation can. He who is a new creation in Christ, in Christ, he's a new creation because he's now living in the spirit, in Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. But if you're still in anxiousness, in desire, in need, and want, you have to understand everything, you're not in the spirit. You're in the flesh. And you don't trust. Has everybody got it? Because when you're in the spirit, you know all things. When you're in the spirit, you see. When you're in the spirit, you don't care about vanity. You're not worried about how you're going to pay this, when you're going to pay this, or who's going to do that. When you're in the spirit, nothing matters. Because you are one with him. That's the purpose of being in the spirit is to become one with your creator. And there's an exchange. Everything he has is yours. And everything you had has been taken. So you don't have to deal with it. That's why we're to be co-laborers. Do we really live and walk in the spirit? What's your priority? Are you in divine order? What's the first thing you see when you wake up? Do you shrug it? Do you move it and get in the spirit or do you deal with it? You can't deal with anything in the flesh. It prospers you nothing. Fear is not of the spirit of God. Fear will negate and disqualify you from walking in the spirit. It is the ministry of the spirit. That means it's the ministry of breath, wind, and fire. Breath, wind, and fire. That's what's the ministry. And the ministry of the spirit is so that the breath, wind, and fire comes from you through him. Has everybody got it? As he releases it to you to flow through you. But if you're not filled with the Spirit, can you do anything? Oh, I know the word. I can quote scripture left and right. Well, you religious little bean. There's a lot of people that know the word and think it's going to prevent them from overcoming the devil. But you must be backed by the anointing. That is the ministry of the Spirit. Has everybody got it? So to be in the ministry of the Spirit, you first must be filled with the Spirit. And that is a requirement and a command every day. It isn't something that happens one time. So you went to service yesterday, you got filled. What about today? Did you get filled this morning? Did you get touched by the Lord? Did you ask him to fill you again? Does everybody get this? Listen, the only way we're going to overcome is to be in the Spirit and utilize the ministry of the Spirit. Other than that, we go backwards instead of forwards. We become religious and lie on our intellectual knowledge instead of him. 
2 Corinthians 3. Glory. The ministry of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. In verse 4. And I know we've heard some of this before, but obviously we need to hear it again in a deeper level. <clears throat> verse 4, let's speak it together. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of who? Ourselves. Ourselves. Not that I can do it, me. I can't do it. You can't do it. That we are sufficient, that we are not sufficient of ourselves to what? Think of anything as what? Being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from what? From God, not us. See, you can't even start to walk in the Spirit until you're willing to come to the end of you. That must be a desire. Everybody so got it. Your desire must be to come to the end of you. If you still don't have this, that desire to come to the end of you, you cannot walk in the spirit. It's impossible. Verse 6. Who also made us what? Sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the what? Spirit. For the letter kills and the spirit gives what? life so it is the ministry of life isn't it it's the ministry of life it's not the ministry of death it's the ministry of life but the ministry of life has tools operations purposes and functions because he is the ministry of the spirit remember the spirit of god came upon mary impregnated her amen Man didn't impregnate her. The spirit did. Jesus is known as the offspring, right, of the spirit. So Jesus' father truly is the spirit, isn't he? Amen? That's why he's called the Christ. And so he came into this realm because he brought the presence, the power, and the truth of God Almighty, eternal. That's called the anointing. So that you and I can continue on the ministry of the Spirit. Those who are willing to obey and follow. See, the anointing isn't used for goosebumps. It's used for service. People are trying to get the anointed to do what? <laughs> are you in service? Is your heart to serve the Lord? Do you know the Lord? The anointing is for service. In verse 7 it says, But the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Again, it is the ministry of the Spirit. The word Spirit means breath, wind, Fire. It actually means air in motion. Air in motion. The breath of God, the wind of God, and the fire of God is the Spirit of God. And it is the ministry of the Spirit to keep us holy and express His righteousness through us and empower us to battle and rescue for the service to the king. It has nothing to do about you or me. It has everything to do about him. That's all he's looking for is someone to possess. Has everybody got it? He's looking for someone to give up their life so he can take it. The Bible says that a body was prepared for him. Well, you and I are all bodies that are now prepared for him. Then you can have fellowship within. And there's a oneness that is desired. 
And Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 and verse 20. Let's speak it together. The Redeemer will come to Zion and those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth. So I want you to understand something. There's about spirit and words. Spirit and what? Words. words. My spirit that I've put upon you and my words that I've put in you. See, you'll know whether you're filled with the spirit by what comes out of your mouth. Shall not be part, depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. My spirit, which is upon you, and my words that are in your mouth. Speaking the spirit is the ministry. In other words, speaking the words of God is associated with the ministry of the spirit, isn't it? But you must be filled with the spirit to speak the things of God. If the things of God are not coming out of your mouth, you obviously are not filled. But I, I, I believe, in, well, listen, you're going to know by your own fruit. Are you speaking the things of God? Or are you speaking the things of self? That's how you'll know. Because when you're filled with the Spirit of God, the dominance is God's presence, not yours. Ezekiel 36. And verse 23. The ministry of the Spirit. Ezekiel 36, 23. Let's speak it together. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am howled in you before their eyes. Now, how are they going to know that God is in you? What comes out of your mouth? <laughs> how, whether you respond to the things of God or you react to yourself. Whether you grumble and complain or you're walking in fear and worry. Where the only thing you're concerned about is your life. You're not filled then. And let me share something vitally important. You can't know him until you're filled with him. You may know about him. You may run across his path. You might have been touched by him. You might have touched his heart. But there's a difference of running into someone once in a while than walking with him and living with him. That is a total different arena. Totally different. You sleep with him, you wake with him. You live in him. Your concern is not about vanity. Your concern is to know more. It's not what you can do for him. It's what he does through you. Ezekiel 36 and verse 24. What did he say? For I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your what? Idols, vain things. How do you know? Listen, your worst idol is you, self. That's the one thing. 
It's us, the self, the old man. The old man that wants to know everything. The old man that's in survival mode. The old man that's afraid to die. The old man that's afraid to trust God. The old man. That's all I can speak of is self, 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 self. Verse 26, he says, and I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you. Why? Because when you are filled with his spirit, his presence has dominance over your presence. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will what? Keep. Everyone say keep. My judgments and what? Do them. In other words, you will no longer do what you desire. You're going to do what he wants. Has everybody got it? You're not going to do what you want no more. And when there's something that you want to do, you're going to go to the Lord. And he's going to say, go for it or no. Has everybody got it? He doesn't mind us having a good time. He doesn't mind us having certain pleasures. Amen? He wants us to enjoy. He said he came to bring life and life abundantly, didn't he? But in this life and life abundantly, these things there are limitations on. That doesn't mean that you're to do things that defile the temple. That doesn't mean you're, you're to do things that contaminate yourself. And that doesn't mean that you do things that promote yourself. Hello. We do things that promote him. But there's things we can do to have fun. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But there's limitations on everything. Because you can go beyond that to where it begins to open a door then. Amen. There's nothing wrong with going to a movie, but when you start putting a movie before everything else, then it's not right. There's nothing wrong with going and playing sports, but when you put those before everything else, then something's not right. You're always taking care of business before you take care of your business. If you take care of God's business, he takes care of yours. Listen, I'm living proof of it. I shouldn't even be here. I should be on the streets begging But it didn't work either. <laughs> it wasn't until I stopped all the things that I tried to do. It was almost like the Lord, I, you know when you get to a point and you go, that's it, I give up. I can't do it no longer. He's like, Phew. are you ready? Are you ready to stop? Are you willing to stop questioning me and what I can do, he says. I'll never forget when the Lord showed up in my living room, sat on the couch and looked at me, and I was struggling with something, and he said to me, Guy, what can you do that I can't? <laughs> yeah, put me to my knees. I repented. See, we have a tendency, the enemy always tries to get to us, and we know about the three chambers of the tabernacle, outer court, holy place, most holy place. He always tries to get you to the edge of the outer court. If he can get you, see, because in the outer court, you're still fighting over yourself. That's why you're always repenting, because you're still there. That's why it's important that you praise and you, and you praise 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 until you die. Because while you praise, you fill the second chamber. Then you get in. Then you can swim a little bit. I have so many believers that now even gotten out of the first chamber. They're still fighting with themselves. They can't get beyond the altar. They keep making sacrifices all day long. Because they're not willing to give up. You got to give up, man. You got to get down to get up. So you can get filled up. Hello. And I'll put my spirit in you and cause you because my presence will have dominance over your presence. 
Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Verse 7. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Deceived. Hello, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. And what's he going to do? He's going to try to convince you to come out of the other chambers and get to the outer court because you're still dealing with you. You haven't gotten beyond you. Me, 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 I, 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 I. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows. He will also what? Reap. So the enemy tries to get you to sow about you. So you sow corruptible seeds. You sow this. You sow that. I'm never this. I can't do that. And you're... Never mind. Anyways, you're throwing just the, uh, corruptible seeds out of your mouth. And you're actually building... Allowing the devil to be formed and turn around and kick your butt. In verse 8, for he who sows to his flesh will what? Of the flesh reap what? Corruption. It's because of what you speak. Breath. It's the ministry of the spirit, what you speak. Jesus didn't think the devil away. He spoke him away. The ministry of the spirit is not what you think. It's what you speak. Everybody has goofy thoughts. But if you're filled with the Spirit of God, you don't allow them to have dominance. Amen? In other words, you can go into water, and you can either breathe the water, which you're going to drown, or you can lift your head up out of the water and take the right ear. Hello? So he who sows his flesh... Reaps corruption, but he who sows to the what? The spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So there's an area where we must sow in the spirit. And by sowing in the spirit, it's praise and worship. It's confession. It's decrees. There's special prayers to break things off of your life. And it's not a one-time event. It's a daily event. And I don't mean just one time a day. It's all day. It's every, whatever you do. Everything should start with prayer. Amen? Be anxious for nothing. Hello? Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. That means nothing. I don't know anything else that means nothing but nothing. It's just nothing. In other words, in this area of being anxious for nothing, it means don't have a concern for anything. Don't move. Don't do anything. Nail your feet to that spot. Until you have prayed and gotten counsel, correction, and direction. And not from your own thinking, from the Spirit. Not from your own desires. I'm telling you, when we stand before God, there's going to be a lot of people going, oh, my God. I didn't know I was so wrong. I didn't know I was so out there. And I was looking at everybody else and how they were out there. And it was me that was out there. It is a spiritual law of sowing and reaping. It's a part of ministry of the Spirit. Why? Because it's a ministry of breath, wind, and fire, right? The ministry of breath. So what you sow is what you reap. Sowing to the Spirit reaps life. Well, there's no reading your Bible doesn't sow to the Spirit. In fact, it should encourage you to sow in the Spirit. What comes out of your mouth is sowing to the Spirit. Has everybody got it? 
What is prayer? Prayer is not silent. People tell me, hey, I prayed two hours a day. What'd you do? I read five chapters of the Bible. Take you three hours of praying? Man? That's not prayer. Prayer is confession. Prayer is speaking. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Speak, speak, speak. So, so, so. John 4. That's why when people come into the discipleship house, we give them prayers to speak. They think that the voice, because they're not filled with the spirit, they don't get it at first that they're supposed to speak. So many times people think, well, I'm just going to read this. I'm just going to read this. You don't read it, you speak it. Well, the Lord knows. Yes, he knows how stupid you are. That's why he's asking you to do this so you can come out of yourself. Hello. Carnal mind is stupid. It doesn't understand the things of the spirit. It can never comprehend the things of God. It can assume. But we don't live in an assumption, do we? John 4, is everybody there? Praise the Lord. Verse 7. Let's read it together. And a woman of Samaria came to drink water. And Jesus said, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then a woman said, of the Samaritan woman said to Jesus, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who is it who says to you, give me a drink, you would ask him if he would give you living water. Then the woman said to her, Sir, you have nothing to draw with out of the well because it's so deep. Where then do you get the living water? Obviously, she was not filled with the Spirit. And you, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and livestock? She could not, that's all she was looking at is things that were tangible. She couldn't see in the spirit, couldn't understand. And Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This is powerful because this is why we drink of the Spirit. Now look at what he says a little bit afterwards because now he's going to tell her how to drink of the Spirit. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may... Not drink that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said, Go, call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you're shaking up with now is not your husband either. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> so you did speak truly. Verse 19. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. <laughs> I love it. I perceive you're a prophet. Why? Because you saw my dirty laundry. You saw that I've had five husbands and the things that I'm doing are not right before you. <clears throat> and verse 20, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. So now she begins to speak of worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you don't know. We know what we worship, for our salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in what? 
spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. Everyone say, God is spirit. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Whoa. So it is the ministry of the spirit, which is the ministry to God. So he says, he explains to her now, all right, this is how you drink. You worship me. It's real simple. You're going to worship. Why? Because I'm spirit. And if you want to know me, you need to be filled with my presence so you and I can fellowship. Then my presence can have dominance over yours. And we can become one. Worship. Worship. And I want to share with you, worship is not with your hands in your pocket. Oh, Lord. To you be the glory. Hallelujah. That's not worship. Oh, thank you. That's not worship. Worship is denying yourself and giving yourself. Where you worship him with all you have. Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not his benefits. Why? Because benefits come from worshiping the Lord. One of the things is you're going to get filled with God. And when you begin to get filled with God, you're going to find all the other garbage that you've been hiding. Ooh, that's there. Because you're filled with light. You're filled with truth. Things begin to, oh, gosh. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I didn't know I, oh, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy upon me. I'm sorry. Then you know what he does? Come on closer. Oh, Lord, fill me more. Fill me more. I want to know more of you. Oh, goodness. I didn't know that either. Good. Get rid of that and come on closer. Come on, get rid of that. Come on closer. Get Has everybody got it? The closeness to your father. The wonderfulness of who he is. You will not know that unless you are filled with the spirit. Do you remember Peter? Remember Jesus spoke to them and, and was declaring about the anointing that breaks the yoke and so forth and I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom and, and Peter's like, yeah. Peter gets a revelation from heaven. Yes! But he wasn't filled with the Spirit yet. Doesn't mean you can't have a revelation. Because when it came down to when Jesus said, it's okay, it's time for me to go and I'm going to have to suffer and pay your price. And have to take care of the things you've done. Peter said, no, Lord. Nobody's getting to you through, unless they got to come through me first. And what did Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. See, good intentions can blind truth. Peter's good intentions, they were, they were good, but they had no meaning. In fact, they were, his good intentions were the devil. But if Peter was truly filled with the Spirit of God, he would have been able to see. Even though he walked with God, talked with God, and God was there, he still was not filled yet. If Judas was filled with God, he wouldn't have done what he did. Amen? If he was filled with the Spirit, he wouldn't have done what he'd done. See, there are things that we do because we're not staying filled with the Spirit. Or we quench the Spirit. And when we quench the Spirit, that means we're allowing our presence to take dominance over his see being filled with the spirit and yielding to the spirit is an all day thing it's an everyday thing it's a life he who lives in the spirit and walks in the spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh so it is the ministry of the spirit because it is the ministry of God as a ministry of his breath it is the ministry of the anointing it is the ministry of confession. How did, you, how did we start this walk? We started by confession, right? We confessed our sins, right? It started with that. Lord, forgive me for my sins. I accept you as Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That had to come out of your mouth, didn't it? Amen? Sorry. So it is the ministry of the Spirit unto confession to salvation. Amen? So when you finally got tired of yourself, you said, God, forgive me. I can't do it any longer. And then what did you do? 
You accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You gave him your life. And then a few hours later, you tried taking it back. Because you weren't filled with the Spirit. Listen. Um, I ran, a, a, a cousin, a family member of mine came into my, into my life. I hadn't seen him in 40 years. And uh, it, it was pretty amazing to come to find out that uh, uh, he had died and gone to hell. And when he got to hell, and he, I'm going to have him give his whole testimony at some time. But when, when he got to hell, language started coming out of his mouth. And he was praying in the spirit. When he got to hell. And the big demon that was putting everybody, pushing everybody into the fire and everything, turned around and said, he doesn't belong here. Because of the words that were coming out of his mouth. And the first thing he thought of was his family members and so forth. And the Lord said, because you thought of everyone else first before you, I'm giving you a second chance. And pulled him out of there. And you know, the wild thing is, is, so he didn't use drugs, but he sold them. Why? Because he was not filled with the Spirit. Didn't stay filled with the Spirit. Didn't know how to fight and went right back. Ended up going to prison and then there was a whole miracle on all of that. The Lord visited him in prison, and I'm not going to share all of it. But he will eventually. But, see, even people can get healed from, the, from God, get delivered from God, and go right back without staying filled with the Spirit. You could be walking with Jesus 40 years and not stay filled with the Spirit and go right back. See, the enemy tries to prevent people from fellowshipping and coming into corporate prayer, corporate worship. The enemy tries to prevent individuals from worshiping God and thinking that their intellect, well, they're okay. But you know what? Eventually you'll find out what comes out of your mouth. You'll realize you're not filled. Or you can become Mr. and Mrs. Religion real big. And you may be a light where you're at, but you're a darkness and a light. Luke chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. So salvation is the beginning, not the end. To maintain is an area of staying filled with the Spirit. Luke chapter 1. Verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you, shall, you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be what? Great in the sight of the Lord. Everyone say, great, great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. So how many of y'all want to be great in the Lord? Then you got to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Has everybody got it? You got to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to be great in the Lord, those who know him and are filled. With, see, you know him because you're filled with him. will do great exploits. Amen. It's not about how much you know here. It's how you know him. See, because then you begin to know his character. You know what's what. Again, there's salvation that starts through confession but 
then there's the ministry of the Spirit that's enforced as you and I are filled with the Spirit of God. The whole covenant, the new covenant is the ministry of the Spirit. That's what it's all about. It's no longer the letter. Sometimes I like to tell people, throw your Bible away. Oh my God, that's heresy. Why? So some people might know the Lord if they really truly seek him. Because so many people just seek the Bible. They don't even seek the king. They don't seek the one who is the true word. Listen, when I met the truth, it wasn't because I read it. It's because I met the person who's called truth. And I associated with the spirit of truth who taught me the truth. I didn't want to read the Bible because I saw too many Bible thumpers, hypocrites. I didn't want to be like that. They spoke one thing and did another, and they did one thing and spoke another. I didn't understand it. Why people be called Christians when they're supposed to be Christ-like, and they weren't Christ-like. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Amen? But you're going to repent and get up. Hallelujah. John 6. John 6, 62. John 6, 62. Hallelujah. And now let's start a little further. Jesus was explaining to them about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. But, of course, they thought they had to, you know, literally do that. They didn't understand it because they were not in the spirit. And, and when he said these things, some of them were offended in verse 60. He says, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you were to, should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who what? Gives life. So it is the ministry of life, isn't it? The ministry of the Spirit is giving life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak, hello, to you are spirit and they are what? Life, words of life, words of life, words of life. Why? Because you're filled with the Spirit. Then you're going to speak words of life. Other than that, you're going to speak words of self. You're going to speak words of fear. You're going to speak words of discouragement. You're going to speak words of how, when, and where. You're going to question God and not trust God. And the only thing you're going to rely on is you. And then you're the idol. Amen. So it's important. Acts 10. To stay filled with the Spirit. It is the ministry of the Spirit and speaking the words of the Spirit. Acts chapter 10. And verse 37. Ten thirty-seven. Let's speak it. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Why? Because he was filled with the Spirit. God was with him. If you're filled with the Spirit, God's with you. Amen. But the reason why God's with you is because you're not, God's not living in your life. You're living in his. Other than that, you're on your own. And he waits for you. He waits. When are you, when are you willing to give up yourself? Come on. When are you willing to? Why don't you lay that down and come on over here? In fact, why don't you lay your schedule down and your agenda and come on over here? And why don't you get filled? Quit assuming People run, boop, 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 like pinball machines. 
bouncing all around. Because they assume this, they try this, they try this, they try this, they try this, and they never stay still enough to get filled. And God is trying to bless them. And even God's doing this. Come on, stop for a minute. <laughs> but Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit with power. Anointed. And we know the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It is the eternal presence, power, and and truth of God Almighty. So if you want the eternal presence, you want power to overcome, and you want to walk in the truth, you have to be filled. Has everybody got it? If you want to walk and have victory, and walk victoriously, and, 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 and prevent the devil from deceiving you, and bringing fear on you, you must stay filled with the Spirit, because it is the ministry of the Spirit. If you're not filled with the Spirit, how can it be the ministry in your life of the Spirit? It can't be. It's impossible. Zechariah 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Now the angel who talked with me came back and walked and uh, wakened me as a man who was wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? And I said, I'm looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the lamp, on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it. In other words, what was filling the lamps with oil was the olive tree. So everybody got it. So that means you, the only way that the lamps would be lit is to be filled with the oil, isn't it? If the lamps were not lit, because there was no oil in it. The oil represents the presence of God. The anointing. In verse 3, two olive trees are by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. And he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my what? Spirit. See, you have your own might. You have your own power. But that is nothing compared to the power of the Spirit. And he expresses here, here is the lamps. The lamps, there are seven lamps. That's a representation of the seven attributes of the Holy Spirit. Seven meaning complete and perfect. They are the seven attributes of the Holy Spirit spoken in the book of Isaiah. And what feeds these lamps is the oil that's called the presence of God, the anointing. So if you want to keep your lamp running and lit, you must stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Because it is the ministry of the Spirit. What you speak. What you worship. See, because we're to be ministering unto God, aren't we? He is Spirit too. So if you sow in to ministering to the Spirit of God, you will reap the Spirit of God. Is everybody okay? He is the Spirit of truth. Amen? He's the Spirit. You know, so many times we want to go, what's the truth of this? Well, if you're filled with the Spirit, you will know. Because the Spirit guides us. Go to John 16. Is everybody okay? We need this message, not only for here, but for others. This is not the ministry of the letter. It is the ministry that ministers to the Spirit of God. That's why we are worshipers. 
Because only through worship can it become the ministry of the Spirit. Listen, the devil don't care how many Bible studies you go to. But if he can get, puff you up with knowledge and cause pride to prevent you to think that you're okay because of what you know instead of who you know, he's got you. John 16, verse 12. <coughs> Jesus said to him, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why? Because they were not filled with the Spirit. You know, Jesus is saying that to many people. Even people here. People all over that are in the body. He says, I got a lot of things to tell you, but you can't get it. There's so many things I've tried to reveal to you, but you wouldn't receive it because you're not filled with the Spirit. You've, you, I've seen your struggles. I've, I've seen all of your torments. I've seen all of the things that harass you and hinder you and prevent you. And I keep speaking to you, speaking to you, speaking to you, but you won't listen because you won't get filled because you cannot comprehend what I say. Verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will tell you things to come. He will tell you things to come. Again, he's going to tell you things to come. He's going to guide you to all truth. So why do people fear? Because they're not filled. Why do people worry? Because they're not filled. Why do people assume? Because they're not filled. They might as well just roll the dice. Does everybody get this? It is the ministry of the Spirit. Everything has to do with the presence of God. Everything. Everything. It is the covenant of the presence of God. Where it's his breath, his wind, and fire. That's why he says, I'll baptize you with my Holy Spirit and fire. Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. Look at the gifts of the Spirit. What are the gifts of the Spirit associated with? Speaking. Words of knowledge. Speaking in tongues. Hello? There's that prophetic, prophesying. If you're filled with the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit are there. If you're filled with the Spirit, you know things to come. If you're filled with the Spirit. Some of you may, well, why aren't I getting filled with the Spirit? Cause, and I'm asking. Maybe because he's trying to tell you to move some things out of the way so you can get filled. See, the Word also tells us that he filled them because they were obedient. See, sometimes it's not you get filled, then be obedient. You become obedient to get filled. So you have a choice to make. Acts chapter 10. Is everybody there? Verse 44. Oh, hallelujah. What you speak is what you get. What you worship is what you get. Verse 44. While Peter was still what? Speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who heard the word. Why? Because his words were what? Spirit. They were life. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had not been poured out on the Gentiles also. Because, not, uh, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with what? Tongues and what? Magnify God. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water from these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So he says here, what? They were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they were magnifying God, praying in tongues. So when you and I are all speaking in tongues, we're magnifying God. 
So don't give me religious stuff. There is there anyone there to interpret? Well, you can't even interpret. What are you concerned about? I get this all the time. Well, there's nobody there to interpret. Oh, shut up, you religious thing. No understanding of the things of the Spirit. It says they were gathered there speaking in tongues as a corporate magnifying God. So we're all together. We are magnifying God. If the Spirit wants someone to, to if he wants to bring a message to the body, it will come upon someone and someone will interpret it. It's real simple. But if it's not happening, he's already got the message set. Hello. And I'm going to close at Mark 16. Mark 16, 16. That's why the baptism of water is cute. It's symbolic. It's fun for everybody to get together and get baptized in water. I've seen people get delivered and healed all kinds of stuff. But if you've never been baptized in water, it doesn't mean you're going to hell. Because the baptism of water is symbolic of being washed by the blood of Christ. That's the baptism. You are baptized in the blood when you repent because it's the ministry of confession. It's the ministry of the Spirit. Amen? So when you repented of your sins, you were baptized. You were baptized unto salvation through the blood of Christ. You were submerged with the blood. Amen? Now you want to be submerged in the Spirit. And that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's where tongues comes. That's where you're filled with the Spirit. That's where you're led by the Spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit are called sons of God. So this is where we stay filled with the Spirit of God. No matter what cost. In verse 16, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. The word believe means to follow. The, these signs will follow those who are filled. Believe me, worry is not going to follow that person. Fear isn't going to follow that person. Greed isn't going to follow that person. Anxiousness isn't going to follow that person. And coarse jesting isn't going to follow that person. Perverse words are not going to follow that person. And self will not follow that person. Because they're to be buried. But signs will follow that person. In my name they will what? Cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues and they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? Being filled with the Spirit of God. Now, I want you to understand something that the gifts, so that it doesn't be confused that just because somebody's moving in the gifts doesn't mean that they're always filled with the Spirit of God. God can use anyone. But if you're truly filled with the Spirit of God, there's a relationship there. And the fear of God is always there. In other words, you're saying, I ain't doing that because that offends him. Doesn't mean the thought won't come. No. Why? Because his presence has dominance over your presence and the presence of evil. It is the ministry of the Spirit. And one of the things the enemy does is try to bring people from the ministry of the spirit to the ministry of the letter, knowledge, and intellect. So everybody got it. And I'm seeing it happen more and more and more. Remember, it's not about what you know. It's who you know, and you're not going to know him unless you're filled. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to continue to fill us and quicken us, revive us, and grant us the desire to know you more and more and more. 
Fill your people today, Father. And let the ministry of your spirit continue to be expressed that Jesus would be glorified in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.